Greetings, fellow action figure connoisseurs, and welcome to another episode of Digital Caveman Presents Transformers Friday. I, as always, am your host, the Digital Caveman, and today I will be presenting you with the Transformers Studio Series 86, number 26, Leader Class Dinobot Swoop. Let's get into it! Let's begin with a look at the packaging. And here on the top, the Transformers, the movie. Nice blue border around there. Should be used to that by now. The Transformers, the movie, Takara Tomy Generations, Transformers, Studio Series 86, number 26, Dinobot Swoop. And of course, he's an Autobot, but he's a Dinobot first. Eight and up Hasbro print on the bottom. Includes figure and six pieces, removable backdrop, and instructions. Small, fine, legalese print, symbols I'm not going to learn, a barcode, and recycled. And that's all upside down, so let me turn that over for you. There you go, made in Vietnam print. You can read it. On this side, we've got some nice artwork of Swoop in his pterodactyl mode, authentic. On the other side, again, artwork of Swoop in his pterodactyl mode. 86, 26, Studio Series Leader Class. And then finally on the back, big screen inspired scale detail and backdrop. And I added the hand, of course, and then there it is again in some other languages. Nice digital render of the figure in both modes. Transforms in 21 steps. Transforms the movie Dinobot Swoop Battle of Autobot City. And then Swoop and the Dinobots drop in to destroy Devastator. And then there's a nice, I guess, digital render of the figure with the backdrop. Backdrop included. Warning attention, Octoon. Don't stick things in any language pie hole that do not belong there. Don't give it to baby. Small, fine, legalese, made in Vietnam print. Another symbol I'm not going to learn. And Hasbro print. That, my friends, completes our look at the packaging. Let's take a look at the figure and his accessories in his, well, I'm going to say primary mode, but it's considered his alt mode. But for me, this is the primary mode of the Dinobot. So let's take a look at the accessories and we'll start with the handy dandy instruction manuals. 8626 Studio Series Dinobot Swoop Transform, the Transformers, the movie Transformers Generations 8 and up. Then on the inside, we have some nice, cleanly illustrated, non-blurry directions that are pretty easy to follow. And that's a good thing. Now, as far as his weapon accessories go, here we have his missile launcher. And I guess he can hold it in his hand as well as have it mounted on his wing in either mode and then here's the missile part of it you can see there's a post right there and there's a port right there nice gold color on it and it looks to be molded in this red plastic and then this gold paint app on it so that's really cool and then you know it just plugs in there and that looks really good together in my opinion you're mileage of course may vary and the other one is just more of the same it does have a bit of waffle in here on the bottom but nicely detailed on both pieces here so very cool and here is one sword and i'm guessing that this is swoop's sword i've never had a swoop that had a sword so I'm guessing this is Swoop Sword, 
because I know for sure this one is a Grimlock sword. And it is very G1 toy inspired. Very nice looking. Both pieces actually are very nice looking. Got lots of mobile detail here in this one and a post here for storage. So very nice. Grimlock finally has his sword. And here we have his last accessory, which is the backdrop, and it's the battle at Autobot City. So, very nice looking piece. You know, Studio Series 8626 on this side, partial Autobot logo. Then on the base, the Transformers, the movie, authentic. And then, you know, just the sides. And a very nice looking piece of artwork there and Generations, and then Transformers 86. And that is all the accessories, my friend. We'll take a look at Swoop himself in his, I like to call primary mode. And he doesn't have to stand like this. He, of course, can be posed out as if he's flying, tilt the head up, flip the toes down, and there you go, he's flying, he's ready. Now I will say, you probably can pose the wings a little bit to simulate, you know, flapping if you wanted to, you don't really have to, but they are, according to the directions, tabbed into his arms here, so there is that. So we got a nice gold paint app here for the front part of the head and the beak. Nice blue for the eyes. And then this part is his the back of his robot head and it's molded in this red color, I do believe. On the wings, got an Autobot tampo on this side. Got an Autobot tampo way over here on this side. Oh wait, they're in the same spot. Durr. And then we got some nice paint amps going on right here. These are probably molded in the correct color. The majority of this guy, like most Transformers these days, is molded in the correct color. Got some paint amps here across the chest, it looks like. And then here across the feet. These m might be painted. I would assume that they are because they do match the rest of the golds on the figure. And then on the back side here, looks like two little jet ports right there. And I have to say, this is really very, very nice swoop. Now, of course, in dinosaur mode, the mouth does open it up. And like all the other Dinobots, except for Snarl, I believe, he does have a post in here to spit fire. So, there's a little post right there that Transformer Blast Effects will attach to. And, you know, he opens his mouth up. So that's really cool. Now, as far as the weapons go in this mode, the missile launchers in this inside port is where they connect the post right there. And they just pour it in on both sides. So there you go, even better. And then if you want to, you don't have to, of course, but if you want to, the swords also have these posts on the side of them. And these ports right here is where those posts go. And this one is kind of loose on this side, so be aware of that. And then same port over on this side. It's not quite as loose over here. But that's nice storage and he even stores Grimlocks for him because Grimlock doesn't have any storage for a sword because he didn't come with one for whatever reason. So this one works a little bit better on this side simply because it's a little lighter than Grimlock's sword. 
but that's how you do it. I'm not gonna leave them like that, because I don't like it. But in my display, I may just keep them together. And then to put him back in sitting mode, put the head down, flip the toes up. And there you have it, my friends. A look at 86 Swoop and his accessories in his primary mode. It's time for alt mode comparisons. And here we have all five of the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobots. In the front we have Swoop. And then on the right hand side is Slag, Sludge, Grimlock, and Snarl. And of course you can't really see Sludge so well because of the wing, but I will pop swoop in the back there. Now you can't really see him, but you can see how they kind of all size up together. For our final set of alt mode comparisons, here we have the Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Swoop with the Transformers Titans Returns Legends Class Bumblebee and the Amazon exclusive Generation Selects Earthrise Leader Class Alternate Universe Optimus Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the comedy portion of tonight's program where I attempt to transform this transformer. And first thing you want to do, let's pop the missile launchers off. As you can see, the swords are already off. If you had the swords on there, you'd want to go ahead and pop those off as well. And first thing I'm going to do untab this and you can see there's a tab right here there's a slot right here and it just folds up like that do it again on the other side and be careful of these pieces mine popped off a couple of times then you want to take the wings and fold them back like this and we'll do something else with them in just a little bit but you also want to before you get too far along, you can see how the arms are kind of spread out from the body a little bit. Just ease those back in. And then once you do that, you can untab the wings from the arm. And you can see there's a tab, there's a tab, and a tab, and a slot, and a slot. So there's how you do that. Just un, un hinder them I guess then right here let's go ahead and straighten that up just put them straight out and you can finish folding the wings in and let's see if I can remember how to fix the feet so you fold the feet out like such and then the back of the feet like that Ooh, look at that it's starting to turn into a robot then you want to take and rotate the fists out from this internal cavity if I can do it in there pretty good I can't really get hold of it with my little bitty fingernail because I haven't been too long cut them There we 
have it. Handy dandy tweezers, my friends. So, then I guess you could leave him like that, although he looks quite comical. But, let's not do that. We'll push the wings back a little bit. Then, right here along this seam, and let me move the camera up just a tad. He does split right here. I think I may have to put that up. So tilt the pterodactyl head all the way back. And of course, I'm on camera so it doesn't want to do like it's supposed to. So give me just a minute, folks. Now, once you have that separated, it should be a little bit easier to deal with. Let's see if it is or if I suck and I broke something. So there we go. It's on a double hinge in the back, but you do have to separate it in the front first. I want to believe you'd put that up like that. You disconnect this brow piece. It's on a hinge. And it tabs into the robot head. So you get that off. Let's tilt the robot head back. And let's spread that chest apart a little more. And you can see it kind of fits right down into this groove. And then you close the chest back up on the pterodactyl head. And you close that piece right there up. We'll go to fix the wings back because I had to move them out of the way a little bit. So the pterodactyl toes just go like kind of on the outside of the knee joint there so they don't jam anything up. And once you have all that done, you can take the missile launchers and you can put them on back on the wings. He can also hold them in his hands. And of course, here is his sword. And I want to say if you don't want to use the sword, there's this port right here, and it fits right in there. And of course, we're going to give Grimlock his sword in robot mode. So when we do the comparisons, he will have it. Let's swoop. Let's go ahead and give swoop his. So there we go. There he is, my friends. 86 swoop, finally. All transformed. Let's take a look at the figure in his robot mode. And most everything that we talked about before as far as the paint apps and stuff still apply to this mold, or this mode, rather. And I did forget to mention he does have an Autobot Tampa right there. And now we can see his robot face. So it's got a nice silver paint app on it and some blue for the eyes. And this red piece is all molded in that red plastic. A little bit of paint apps here, here, on the shins here. And that is pretty much it for the paint apps. Oh, right here. On the sides of the legs. Everything else seems to be molded in the appropriate color. Let's talk about his articulation for just a minute. 
He doesn't really look up much. Well. He can look down that far. He doesn't chicken neck. He does have some waggle though, look at that. And he can do the full exorcist. Now at the shoulder, if the wings were not in the way, it would do a full 360 degree rotation. So we'll outswing a little bit. There we go, full 360 degree rotation. And he can raise his arm up past 90 degrees. Cut here at the upper bicep on a mushroom peg, double mushroom peg, for another 360 degree rotation. At the elbow, looks to be single hinged, and it will give you a little, slightly better than 90 degrees it looks like. And then at the wrist, he does have a 360 degree rotation on a single mushroom peg. Now, if this were not in the way, at the waist, he would have a full 360 degree rotation, but because of the beak there, he gets that much. Rotation at the waist. At the hips, he gets the full splits. He can kick forward. approximately 90 degrees and backwards like a mule look at that then at the upper thigh there is 360 degree rotation there at the knee it is a double hinged knee due to transformation and he gives you that much bend there so that's really good and you just have to watch out for those now, as far as tilt, I guess really due to transformation, he can tilt down that far, and he really tilts up none. But he does have a hinge here in the ankle for rocker and darn near 90 degrees of it. And as far as the weapons, everything else, we covered that during the transformation mode, but we'll just go ahead and pop that sword right back in his hand that arm looks there we go now we've got everything back in place properly I think and there we have it my friends there's a look at 86 swoop in his robot mode it's time for my favorite part of a Transformers review Robot Mode Comparisons, and here we have the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Swoop with the Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Dinobot Slag and the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Grimlock. Here we have the Transformer Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Swoop with the Transformers Power of the Primes Deluxe Class Dinobot Swoop, the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Sludge, and the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Snarl. For our final set of robot mode comparisons, here we have the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobot Swoop with the Titans Returns Legends Class Bumblebee and the Walmart exclusive Netflix War for Sabatron Trilogy Earthrise Leader Class Optimus Prime.
For final thoughts on the Transformers Studio Series 86, number 26, Leader Class Dinobot Swoop, I have to say, I am so, so glad to finally finish my 86 Dinobot set. I was wondering for a while whether I was going to be able to get a hold of Swoop, but when the initial production sold out, they had some more coming, so that seems really good. At least that's the way I see it, is what happened. And I'm just, I'm happy to finally complete this set. I think I now have a definitive set of Dinobots for my collection. And I really don't intend to buy more Dinobots unless they do um, leader class versions that are more in the vein of the toys and combine to make Volcanicus. That would be the only other way I would I would purchase another set of Dinobots. And even then, I'm not sure if I would or not. It would be cool to have a combiner made of nothing but leader class, but it seems that you know, when it comes to combiners, they're going smaller instead of larger. So, hmm, that's doesn't forebode well for Devastator, the 86 Devastator. I think he's going to be way too small. But that's just my opinion. Your mileage, of course, may vary. But we're talking about this guy. I like the colors, I like the style of it, I like the sculpt on it. There's just not anything I don't like about it. Except for maybe transforming it. The the chest piece separating the chest piece can be a little bit of a pain as you saw if you watched me transform this guy. So but other than that, that's that's just a little thing because I will probably not transform any of my Dinobots again at this point because I like them better in dinosaur mode than in robot mode and this was the last one that I had to use the other ones to do comparisons with so I really think there there shouldn't be any more transforming for these guys they'll, they'll stay in the dinosaur mode as far as I know right now but Again, I'm, I'm glad I got this guy. And you can see something. I, I did not like their placement of storage for the sword. So you can see where I have it stuck on the arm now. Rather than on on his back. And I, that actually looks better. You notice Grimlock's sword is not on him. I actually found storage for Grimlock's sword on Grimlock. So now we just have to have swords for for slag and sludge and a gun for snarl and those dinobots will be complete but again I'm really glad to have this guy I gotta figure out how to make him go on a stand so that he can fly in my display like my power of the primes one did and I think I about got it figured out but Anyway, that's my problem. That's that has nothing to do with you guys. I'm sure you guys don't really, you know, care how I set my, my display. But again, high marks for this guy. I, I think this is probably my favorite of the Dinobots. Not because of the way he looks, but well, partially because of the way he looks. I think they did a really good job on the paint on all of them. But this one seems to be the most intuitive to transform, and it's reasonably easy, except again for the chest. So I think this is my favorite one to transform. I really don't like transforming all the rest of them. 
that much. So, well, that does it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Each view does count, and I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very, very much for supporting this channel through viewing. If you are interested in supporting my channel further, I am now offering memberships at various tiers. Click the join button on my YouTube page or check this video's description for the link and see if any membership offers are right for you, but only if you are in a position to do so. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you would like to see more content or just help the channel grow, or both, that's even better. And don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. That's a wrap, folks. I'll see you next time.